there are seven really important things I want to share with you regarding probiotics. So probiotics are friendly bacteria in super high numbers. There are 10 times the number of microbes than there are your own cells. And you probably already know that these microbes make up a significant part of your immune system. Uh, they're involved in helping you digest. They make bile, called secondary bile salts. They are intimately involved with making vitamins. Uh, these microbes make uh, neurotransmitters. Like 90% of all the serotonin in your body is made from your own microbes. So they do a lot. But let's go through the seven uh, points. Number one, these probiotics are not just good for your gut. Many people use probiotics for their skin, like on their face, to handle eczema or certain types of acne, or they might put it into their scalp to handle like a um, overgrowth of fungus or candida. There's probiotics for your mouth, okay? There's probiotics for the vaginal area. And so these probiotics don't just work on the gut and simply because you have microbes that live on the outside of the body as well as the inside. Now, the second point about probiotics is we have to talk about the opposite of a probiotic, which is an antibiotic. Um, there are things uh, out there that mimic antibiotics as well, like glyphosate, which is an herbicide in all the GMO foods that you are exposed to, and also certain artificial sweeteners can act as an antibiotic as well. Also, antibiotics are grossly overused. Like, for example, most respiratory infections are usually viral, not bacterial. But over 75% of the time, doctors prescribe antibiotics for upper respiratory infections. Most sinus problems are viral, okay? So if you give an antibiotic to someone with a viral infection, guess what? It won't work. In fact, that antibiotic will weaken your immune system, so then the virus has an advantage. So you might end up prolonging the viral infection. Most eye infections are viral, not bacterial. Most ear infections are viral, not bacterial. Even most sore throats are viral, not bacterial. And 95% of bronchitis is viral. So again, when you treat the wrong problem, you end up with more problems. There are some slight minor uh, side effects with antibiotics, and I'm being very sarcastic. Uh, a lot of digestive issues, either diarrhea or constipation. You get um, bacterial resistance. So in other words, you develop superbugs that now resist that antibiotic. So when you use antibiotics and you kill off microbes, you never kill off 100%. There's always a small group of very, very resilient microbes that survive, and then they pass on certain genetics to other microbes, and now you're left with a situation. Because if you're the person that uses antibiotics over and over and over again, or you're the person that gets sick over and over again, you're going to eventually be in trouble because eventually the antibiotics will not work anymore. And not only that, these infections become bigger and bigger. So it's a bit of a trap. So in other words, learn from other people's mistakes, use antibiotics sparingly, and anytime you take an antibiotic, uh, take a probiotic at the same exact time. Unfortunately, growing up, I had throat infections every single year, and I took a lot of antibiotics. And the last point about that is that uh, livestock, they're given a lot of antibiotics. In fact, the ma great majority of antibiotics are given to animals that we end up eating, and that creates all sorts of other issues. One of the side effects is um, candida, because your microbes make up mostly uh, bacteria, but there's also friendly yeast and friendly fungus and friendly candida in your gut living there, having a good relationship. But when you start taking antibiotics, you wipe out the bacteria, but not the fungus, not the yeast, not the candida. Now there's nothing to keep those guys in check. So now the relationship switches. They become a little bit nasty. They become pathogenic and they can start growing in larger amounts. And so just as a side note, if you get that problem, start taking a probiotic like kefir immediately as well as avoiding all sugars of all kinds. All right, number three, there are what I call natural antibiotics that a person can take, like garlic, oregano, colloidal silver, black walnut extract, tea tree oil. All of these are great things to kill off the pathogens, but they don't seem to create negative side effects like actual antibiotics. Also, cranberry has been known to help the bacteria in your bladder, 
to move right on through. So it does have an antibacterial effect. Number four, kefir is always better than yogurt. There's not near uh, the amount of microbes in yogurt as there are in uh, kefir. And kefir is more diversified microbes, and it also has the friendly yeast and the bacteria, whereas yogurt does not. The microbes in yogurt don't normally withstand the hydrochloric acid in your stomach, so they don't survive your stomach acid. So it might provide food for um, the microbes that you already have, but it's not going to really fortify the microbes like kefir would, which usually does survive the stomach acids. If you're going to do kefir, make sure you don't uh, do low-fat kefir or sweetened kefir. Get the plain. And if you can get it from a sheep or a goat, that would be better. Number five, if your stomach acid is weakened, or if you don't have uh, a good, strong pH in your stomach, so normally it should be between one and three. If yours is higher, less acidic, What's going to happen for most people is that you allow certain microbes to get through that barrier in your stomach. And some of these microbes can then have the potential to grow into something called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So now you have a situation where there's too many microbes in the wrong place. We want these microbes to be in the large intestine, not the small. And so if you take a probiotic and you feel more bloated or you feel worse, suspect SIBO. So it's a good little test to you know kind of rule out SIBO. And if you do have SIBO, you want to make sure you don't consume uh, probiotics, at least right away. You want to make sure you take um, betaine hydrochloride as an acidifier. You can also take the natural antibiotics that I mentioned, like garlic, oregano, things like that. And it's also very important that you fast because fasting allows the gut to reset and to flush out certain things that are uh, interfering with the growth of microbes. And also fasting increases the diversity of different microbes in your gut. So I guess it's the stress that causes the microbes to then uh, diversify. Number six, soil-based vegetables actually have microbes in them. It's a really great probiotic. Unfortunately, a lot of the, the salads and the vegetables in the grocery store are grown hydroponically, okay? And my viewpoint is, yet we don't have a lot of research on this, is that there's just not enough a comparable amount of microbes in these hydroponic vegetables as you would get from soil-based uh, vegetables. And I'm not talking about kind of like a typical soil-based vegetable. I'm talking about like a very good fertile soil that then you grow vegetables like in your own garden or something from the farmer's market. Because apparently the roots of the plants actually eat the microbes and they pull them in. So you're getting sometimes massive amounts of microbes in that vegetable, which can act like a probiotic. And when you eat a variety of vegetables, you then get an increased diversity of microbes. All right. And number seven, you have metabiotics. Okay. Now what is metabiotics? That's all the, um, the things that the probiotics make. So in other words, when you take a probiotic or a probiotic food, especially like sauerkraut, you're not just getting probiotics. You're getting a lot of other things that is called metabiotics. You're going to hear a lot more about that in the future. But it's all these associated additional things, um, not just the probiotic, that create some really cool health benefits like homeostasis of the good bacteria in your gut and also like even the decrease of carcinogens. So basically... These factors can help break down certain things that can turn into cancer. And also the maintenance of the tight junctions in your gut, which is like a leaky gut situation. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side. Now, to learn more about probiotics, okay, if you haven't seen this video, check it out, I put it up right here.